Welcome to Big South Member Recognition Week. I'm alongside Charleston Southern head baseball coach Mark McMillan, starting his first year with the Buccaneers. Coach, thanks for joining us as we get to know you today. I uh, appreciate you having me. I'm excited. Well, you're a first-time head coach at the Division One level. How has the adjustment been for you uh, getting to Charleston during this unprecedented, unprecedented time during the pandemic? Well, it's been, uh, I want to say unique, but, you know, I really I really don't know because we're all adjusting as we go through this pandemic. Uh, it took me 91 days uh, before I actually saw, I guess, uh, the team or players in person. Uh, so from the day, you know, that essentially uh, the job was extended and accepted to when I got to see them in person uh, was 91 days. And uh, that, that in itself was uh, very unique. Uh, it was tough. Uh, you know, as we, we learn to do things virtually, but it was uh, one comment that was made that I keep in perspective. Uh, I was speaking to uh, a coach uh, and he was complimenting me, you know, on the, on the opportunity, congratulating me. And he said, uh, he goes, you may be the busiest head coach or really baseball, college baseball coach in the country right now. And I, and I thought about it and then I laughed. And I was like, oh, you may be right. Because during the pandemic at that time, there just wasn't a whole lot we could do, you know, in terms of we're not recruiting, you know, we're, we're shut down. And, but then, Hey, you know, here's the opportunity to get, you know, to, to lead a program. And then yes, there was, there was a lot taking place, but, uh, but it's been good, but that was, that was unique. You know, I just think it's one of those uh, typically I would say probably when you're, uh, when you're hired, you have a chance to meet the players fairly quickly. Uh, but in this case, it was 91 days. <laughs> When you uh, finally got to meet your team in person, how did you communicate with them or how often did you communicate them with them on a regular basis? And what was that first in-person and when's the in-person instruction beginning as well? Well, the, the first actual um, communication with them was the day following my hiring. So we did a, we did a lot of Zoom uh, over uh, summer. Um, there was a time there we gave them a little bit of break from us, uh, especially during uh, you know, July 4th, et cetera. But then once they got back, um, you know, we did meet with them in person. Uh, and that was great just to see them, you know, just to be able to do an air high five or bump an elbow, uh, you know, whatever it may be at that point. Um, <clears throat> we continue to do uh, Zoom meetings just as we do now. Uh, we actually uh, got on the field with them uh, Wednesday of this week. So, you know, it's been a little bit more extensive than, than maybe others, but we're just trying to uh, keep their well-being, not only their well-being, but, you know, our entire campus's well-being uh, in our thoughts. And so that's been uh, exciting. You know, you get to see their energy. Uh, uh, yes, they may be behind a mask, but at least you're there talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, uh, whereas this is one-on-one, -on -one, but, you know, just uh, physically being around them, uh, uh, you know, that part has been terrific. So let's touch on your baseball coaching background. First off, what was your familiarity of Big South baseball when you took the job? I had some familiarity with it, uh, you know, being that uh, they've had, you know, what is to use, for example, programs that have, have won a number of games in the past. And so, you know, you're, you're aware of those that uh, either won – uh, make it to postseason or two, you play them. So, for example, last year uh, during my time at Ole Miss, we played High Point. Um, so, you know, that uh, obviously is one that I'm familiar with. Carl Kuhn, who I've known for years, uh, you know, being at Radford uh, and others. And so uh, there's there's definitely a familiarity with them. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to come in here and, and join a conference that's going to expand. Uh, you know, next year as well. And, uh, but it's just getting used to, uh, you know, the terrain and, uh, you know, different parts, whereas you know, I've been uh, in Mississippi for seven years. And so, uh, and then went to school there. So, you know, I had a lot of familiarity with Oxford and then it's just kind of getting here and going, okay, hey, there's more than uh, one street than, you know, Highway 78 or I-26 uh, to get around. So, uh, uh, but yeah, it, it's, uh, is it, uh, you know, did I know a lot about everyone? No, but I do know that it's good baseball. These are division one players, which means, you know, they're some of the best in the country and, uh, it's ultra competitive. 
Well, you touched on a little bit about your baseball past at Ole Miss. You played there, graduated in 96, and then you began coaching in 2000. So what was, what was going on uh, in your life during those four years? Was it pro baseball or anything else? And then when did you realize you wanted to pursue a coaching career? Well, I'd like to say it was pro baseball, but uh, unfortunately, um, you know, if you throw me a slider on the outer part of the plate, I just really struggled, just couldn't seem to pick that pitch up. Uh, and, you know, uh, so I, I really appreciate uh, and I chuckle at this because uh, during that time, Mike Bianco was at LSU. And, you know, I never asked him, hey, what was the scouting report on me? You know, but uh, I think I know what it was. So uh, that was not part of uh, that uh, that four year span. Uh, what I did, I, I really wanted to I, I told myself that, you know, I want to get uh, a degree in managerial finance. I want to at least uh pursue that and see if it's something that I would like to do. Uh, I was very fortunate, Mark. I uh, uh, got on board with the company, it's First Tennessee Capital Assets, had a terrific boss, someone that I keep in touch with today named Jerry Hubbard, and I just love him. And uh, not too long after I had been there, <clears throat> my high school athletic director reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to head up uh, their middle school baseball program. And, you know, you're kind of like, hmm, I, I just started here. I really don't know if I should go to my boss and say, hey, by the way, can I leave it, uh, you know, right at five o'clock and, you know, go to Mama Mater and coach some baseball. But, you know, he was extremely supportive of it. Um, that led to, uh, you know, an additional opportunity to coach football there. So I just was able to kind of stay involved. And through that, what I found was, wow, I really enjoy this. And, um, you know, it was something that you know, I ended up gaining a passion for. I think I knew I wanted to do it, but again, I, I wanted to try this other route and I loved it. Uh, but there was an opportunity that came available to be the head coach uh, at uh, my high school. Uh, it really wasn't something I pursued. I just went to them and met and said, you know, if, if you're just unsure of what direction you want to go uh, and, you know, uh, you'd be interested in speaking, then I'd be happy to do that. And that's really how uh, that next step happened. And, you know, Jerry was tremendous. He got it. He understood it. And next thing I know, I actually stepped into a situation that was, for me, the best of both worlds because I was uh, the business manager of uh, the, the high school, but then also the head baseball coach. So I was like, wow, this is – you know, I get to kind of keep my, keep my feet in both, in, in both pools there. That's terrific. Uh, speaking when you got, once you got into coaching, who were some of your mentors in the coaching profession and what do you teach today that they taught you? Wow. There's, there's so many, you know, I, and when I first uh, started as a high school head coach, I had a gentleman named Ernie Bennett, uh, Ernie, uh, Ernie actually coached against me when I was uh, a player and, um, you know, and I remember one of the first things he shared with me was, hey, uh, you know, I wish I was one of those that invented stuff. But he goes, but I steal a lot of stuff from other coaches and teach it. So I learned right then, you know, hey, that that's actually a good thing to listen to because we're not going to know everything. And, and those that are truly confident in what they do, they're OK with sharing hey, these are my philosophies, or these are what we do to help our team improve, whether it's mentally, physically, et cetera. And from that point, and I don't want to miss somebody, you know, but I would say <clears throat> uh, Bill Mosiello, uh, you know, Bill came on as an assistant coach in 1995 at Ole Miss. Um, just, I fell in love with him, you know, and uh, he's the only coach that ever told me he loved me. I'll never forget that. Uh, he's an individual today that I can still reach out to. And I think for Mo, it was – he's the one that I look back on and go, wow, where did this passion for coaching come from? Because every day, I mean, his energy level was was very high. Uh, you know, he just pushed you to be your best. He, he knew how to kind of prod you, but at the same time let you know, hey, I still love you. And um, no doubt early on, you know, his emphasis or sorry, his influence played a big emphasis on what I tried to teach to the young men that I was fortunate to, to share the game with. Others, uh, Mike Bianco, <clears throat> I mean, can't thank him enough. 
Um, you know, I uh, was very interested in learning uh, this system, you know, a system that uh, Skip Bertman, uh, you know, brought with him to LSU. And, you know, Mike was obviously a, a significant piece of that, and he brought it to Ole Miss. And you just see where this system has, has extended to uh, today, you know, uh, uh, from Louisville to ECU to Indiana to Mississippi State and others. And, you know, for him to sit there and take on – uh, me as part of his staff, uh, you know, was a tremendous blessing, but, you know, something I'm grateful for uh, because the system teaches consistency, you know, and if you can be consistent, you got a chance to be successful. And I don't know if there's a coach really from a consistency standpoint for 20 years has been as, uh, you know, as successful as he has. Um, um, and then the same thing, you know, you can, you can coach your players tough, uh, you can teach them, you know, Mike taught me the thing I learned from him on the field is he's going to teach. He's a teacher. You know, he's not going to assume that they just know something. And that's something that I've carried with me, you know, here. Um, others, Alvin Ripman, uh, a gentleman that uh, at a point where I was basically out of baseball uh, that took me on, um, presented me with an opportunity to coach a team that he, essentially put together, but then become a, a scout for the Mariners. Uh, Carlos James, another one that, again, I was out of baseball and uh, took me on and, you know, a person that I love today and I wouldn't be where I am without him. Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, these are gentlemen that, that had a, a, a large impact, but there's others from uh, Dan McDonald to Derek Johnson to Eric Backage to Cliff Godwin. Um, you know, there's things that I've taken from all of these, these individuals. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope I didn't leave somebody out. I probably did. I threw out a lot of names there, but um, there's been a number of them uh, that have been grateful in their time and willingness to share information. And, um, you know, I, I am just so thankful for that. Well, that's a pretty uh, hefty list, uh, and that's terrific for you to have that support over those years. And it kind of leads into the next question on this side, more of with all those individuals and their influence, you know, how have you developed your own coaching style? And second to that is what will fans see of the Buccaneers come this spring uh, that they haven't before? Well, you know, coaching style, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I find myself out here the past two days, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not probably like a 10 energy level. You know, I let, I let, you know, uh, coach Izio here, he can be the 10, but you know, there's things where I do get excited. I, you know, I want to give him a, a, that a boy or, you know, and I'm kind of like, well, Hey, should I be as loud right there? Or do I need to kind of step back? But at the end of the day, I think about, you know, what uh, in particular, my father, um, Mike Federico, another mentor of mine that I didn't mention before, and I, I hate that I missed it, but, you know, what they shared with me is be yourself. All right. Well, we're going to move on to some fun questions now. Uh, we got five quick ones. Um, again, getting to know you a little bit more on the personal side and uh, some of it, your relationship to baseball. First off, who is your favorite baseball player? Wow. Um, you know, when you asked me that, I, I, can I put, can I give you three? But I mean, like, you know, cause I look back and I go, I always try as a youngster, there are two people I tried to mimic. I always tried to mimic George Brett. I got pictures of me leaning back, you know, the way he used to hit. And that was who I wanted to be as, as a position player. I wanted to be Nolan Ryan. I wanted to be Nolan Ryan until, uh, you know, my mom uh, used to squat and catch me until I broke her toe. And I was like, you know, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be Nolan Ryan and it's probably not good to break your mother's toe when she's trying to catch you. Um, but a player I really liked and I enjoyed, and I just liked the way he played the game. Uh, and I loved his nickname and it became one of mine and it was Lenny Dykstra and, um, you know, his nickname was Nails. And, uh, you know, I think it just kind of was what I wanted people to epitomize me as a player, just someone who would play hard. That, that's really – and that's what I enjoyed about him. You know, he's a little undersized, but just played the game hard, you know, always dirty. And so uh, that's probably – you asked me for one, but, uh, you know, those are the three that uh, really probably had the, the biggest influence on me in terms of who I wanted to be on the field as a player. Terrific. 
when was the first major league game you ever attended? You know, how old were you? Do you remember the seat location? Any special memories of that day? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, I, I know, I believe I was four. And, and the reason I say this is, uh, and again, I'm going to go back to my mother. So my mother references this a lot. I, uh, and she talks about this quite a bit. When I was uh, four years old, I got hit in the mouth with a baseball bat, ended up having plastic surgery and all that. But we go to spring training. So I guess spring training counts. And uh, um, so we're down there, and I know we're, we're trying to catch uh, Pete Rose. You know, that, that's – want to see Pete Rose and then, then, then the Dodgers. Want to see, like, Ron Say, you know, uh, Rig Monday, those guys. Well – and this isn't the nicest thing to say, but you, you know, it's funny. And so I go to my brother and I go to try to get an autograph from Pete Rose and Pete, I apologize. Uh, but Pete's uh, words were, uh, Hey, get lost kids. So that was a, a tremendous experience for us that, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there's a better time to approach them uh, to get an autograph. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, look, he's, he's Charlie hustle. That doesn't, I, I'm okay with it, but you know, that's one that my mother references a ton, but that was my first experience. Um, if, uh, if I can share with you one more, and this is just kind of funny. Okay. So uh, I never told this person this story. Okay. They don't, they don't know this. So if they watch this, they're going to know it for the first time. Uh, but when I was at first Tennessee capital assets, so this is that four year span where, you know, I was working there, had a gentleman, and he uh, came to me and said, hey, we, we uh, got an opportunity to go to the Cardinals game tonight. Would you like to go? And this is when Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa were battling it out for the, the home run title. So I turned to Jerry Hubbard and I'm like, um, Jerry, can I go? And he's like, absolutely. So get on a plane, you know, fly to St. Louis, uh, get tickets. And so we're at the game. And, you know, that's the first time I'd seen Mark McGuire in person. And I was like, man, he is huge. You know, you just – it's a little bit different on TV. Um, saw his first at bat, and then I got hungry. So, you know, the reason you're going to this game is you want to see Mark McGuire hit a home run. Well, I just – I was hungry. I wanted to go get a hot dog. <laughs> and so I'm standing at the concession stand getting a hot dog, and I hear the crowd erupt when McGuire hit a home run. So you go to the game because you want to see Mark McGuire hitting a home run. I'm sitting there going, oh, no. I've got to go back and sit down with them and be like, hey, did you see it? And I'm like, I, I was like, I can't tell them. I was at the concession stand getting a hot dog. Well, that's where I was. So I missed it, actually. But, uh, but it was a great experience. Well, that's something. Um, <laughs> is there a national or global baseball event that you have never attended that you'd like to in the future? Well, the World Baseball Classic would be uh, tremendous. I really enjoy watching that. You know, there's just a different feel, uh, a different spirit about it. Um, you know, that's that's one that stands out. And then, you know, uh, I would think just at some opportunity or if there's a chance to represent USA Baseball, you know, uh, that would be uh, really cool. You know, I've been fortunate to know some people that have done that. Uh, but, you know, I haven't had that experience, and that's one of, you know, it's kind of one of those bucket list things to, to be able to, to either be a part or share it or uh, uh, assist or, you know, just uh, uh, be a resource. You know, I, I just love the fact of, of representing our country and, um, and, and doing that, but uh, and then I guess that kind of why it falls in line a little bit with the World Baseball Classic. I just uh, I love watching that. If you could pick anyone to have a game of catch with for 10, 15, or even longer minutes, who would that be? Man, that's, that's another one of those uh, hard questions. You know, when you – again, when you first asked me, I would say, you know, uh, my mom and dad. Uh, and that's uh, just because that's who I'd want to play catch with, you know. Um, there's so many historical figures – uh, in our game, um, you know, and, and one for me that, that comes to mind, you know, is Roberto Clemente, um, you know, just uh, someone that, you know, uh, meant so much uh, to, to our game, you know, and I tie him in with Jackie Robinson, uh, you know, those, those numbers, 42 and 21, you know, uh, stand out so much 
uh, in, in baseball. And it would be uh, very interesting to just be able to play a game of catch, you know, with them and uh, talk about their experiences and, uh, you know, trials and tribulations. And, you know, for example, like with Roberto, like, you know, why were you just so adamant, you know, that, hey, I have to get on this flight, you know, uh, because it was important to him. So uh, there's many, and you know, as well as I do, that we could sit there and say, but, you know, playing catch with my mom and dad would be uh, tremendous. But those two, uh, wow, the what I would get and learn uh, would be uh, just uh, terrific. Our last question uh, for you today, um, and you've already shared some great stories to this point, but is there something else about you that nobody really knows that your team would be very surprised to hear or learn about? Well, uh Probably so. I mean, I, I think there's, there's, I would say maybe two things. Uh, one is, uh, I like reality TV, which, uh, I guess it's kind of weird. I don't like, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I guess when I watch it, it's more reality. Uh, but the other is, uh, my dad was a professional hockey player and, um, but I'm a terrible skater. Uh, I am awful. Uh, I would be the worst example that you could put on the ice for someone that represents a family member who played professional sports. I, uh, I'm not good. And, uh, dad, I'm sorry. Uh, but you know, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. And, uh, you know, I guess if the players saw that and they were like, Hey, you know, your dad played professional hockey, you know, did you play? Like, no, I, I didn't. And, uh, and I didn't because I'm not good. So I'm the guy that hangs on to the side of the board and, you know, just tries to make it around the ice without sweating too much. But, uh, I guess that would be it. You know, they they haven't uh, they haven't gotten uh, into too many details yet, but uh, probably those two things there. Well, that's terrific, Coach. It was really we really enjoyed getting to know you today. Thanks for uh, sharing uh, a lot of your memories, a lot of your experiences with us, and really appreciate your time. And we wish you all the best. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.